Hello everyone and welcome to another work trip introducing. Um, I am Sally Page, so I'm one of the co-founders of WorkTrip. And if you don't know what we do by now, where have you been? Um, but we are a marketplace and platform that helps teams to plan, book and measure the impact of high impact offsites. So they can build connection, creativity, culture, all that good stuff. Um, and so I'm particularly delighted to be joined today by Q Hamarani. So Q is currently the Chief People Officer at Paper, which is an educational support system for K-12 students. But prior to that, he was at Airbnb for, what was it, like five years? Five years, yeah. Not five sure. years, joining as the company's first global people operations leader. And really excitingly, I think, building out their amazing Live and Work Anywhere program that had a ton of press um, for, for, for being so innovative and quite rightly so. Um, Q is a huge voice in the future of work conversation. And he's also one of our beloved WorkTrip advisors. So thank you so much for joining us, Q. Thanks for having me. Really excited to be here and chat with everyone. Yeah. Um, so I thought as a starting point, um, we would refer to you recently con contributed to a Forbes article, which was super, super interesting. I thought about um, hybrid and remote working and sort of what we're still getting wrong as we try and navigate what this sort of new new normal looks like. And I think a lot of us are feeling those those pressures at the moment. And there's something that you mentioned, which is very close to our heart at WorkTrip which is about driving sustainable change mm -hmm. in the way that organizations work. So I would love to hear a bit about sort of why that's important to you and led you to the point in your career that you are right now. Yeah, no, great, great to chat. And thanks for having me again, Sally. Um, I think, um, you know, the, the, uh, the, the genesis for the article or the theme for the article that you referenced in Forbes was really trying to um, hit home on a critical point about just demystifying um, what remote work means, um, how it should be perceived. So I think a, a little bit of background context. Um, I was a little frustrated or, or, yeah, frustrated, maybe not the best word, but frustrated in the context of reading a lot of headlines across the board but that when people um, went with one option, they thought that was the best and only option. So what I mean by that was, headlines in the news of, you know, from the Elons of the world saying, um, you know, remote work is disloyal and dishonest or whatever the adjective, the colorful adjective that was used to um, on the other side of the spectrum, um, people being forced to come into the office because that's the only way to build culture. And my whole um, theme there and, and for today and for in, in all my discussions with folks are there is no real right answer. You have to figure out it's almost multidimensional. And this is applicable to honestly anything you do in, in, in life in some extent, but any people program bringing it back to culture in, a, in an organization as well, which is you really have to figure out what works best for your business and what works best for what your people want. And if you can connect those two dots um, or, and, and bridge them, that's where the real magic happens. So, you know, we don't have to all believe that um, for this trend to continue of remote work, everyone is going to work remotely in, in a decade. Exactly. But we do have to acknowledge and believe or understand, at least from my perspective, that knowledge workers that no longer need to be tethered to a geographical location um, will want, may want or will want some level of flexibility. Um, and that trend will continue. I think Nick Bloom just posted, I think it was a month ago or something, um, you know, just from the start of the pandemic to now, remote work has gone up five or eight fold, right? Um, and that, that will continue to go up. So I think the, my general thing is remote work will continue to go up. So that's, that's one thing. And it's not for everyone. So you have to figure out if it works for, you may have a business model that supports it, but the people really want to all be in the office. Yeah. I have to find that marriage. Now, the flip side of that is what is remote work? So it's trying to demystify like the, 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 almost the concept of remote work, which is, um, it is not um, a situation where you never meet in person, right? Remote work does not mean like you're 100% remote forever. What it means is you have to be that much more intentional about meeting in person so that you can recharge your, your, um, your energy, your collaboration, your social re recharge bar barometer 
so that when you go out and you're working back remotely in a distributed environment, you have that connections. You know, I, I do believe that you can be very productive over Zoom. We've all done, we've all been forced um, if we were not part of the um, remote work wagon. And this, this is inclusive of Airbnb, where we were not a remote company at all pre-pandemic. People yeah. were in at least three to four days, probably four days a week um, uh, regularly. But like a lot of us, when we got forced to work in a remote environment, we, I think, can all say now with confidence that you can be productive in a remote environment. Right? We at Airbnb had to turn around the company, go public, all 100% remote due to the pandemic. But what I think um, you cannot do is build very strong um, bonds over time by being 100% remote. So remote can get you productive. It can get you to a point of like us having this, con all of us having this conversation today, right? Like getting us in a room physically would be really hard. But at least I know, Sally, we've met a bunch of times in London um, to, to kind of understand our, our goals a little better. Um, I'm sure over time, uh, we'll hopefully get to meet a lot of the audience too. But my point here is that you can be productive remotely, but you need that in-person connection to strengthen those relationships so that you can then thread on the on the productivity over time to make it sustainable to your, to your original point on the question. Okay. Sustainability comes from, I guess, three dimensions. One is understanding what works for your business. Second is understanding what your employees want. And then always having a level of in-person connection. Um, if you are, if you're forcing people or you think your business model is right for bringing in three, uh, bringing, bringing in individuals three days a week to the office, that is your in-person connection. If you are remote and you are distributed and you um, really um, so, uh, believe that having a diverse geographically, demographically, um, through thought, diverse talent pool and organization is, is important, then make sure you double down on what, what you're trying to bring to the world, which is bring in that in-person connection. And how you do that, there are ways to do it. There are um, ways to do it. So that's the sustainability piece of it. It's um, And demystifying a little bit of uh, strong opinions you hear in the headlines of, you know, my way is the right way and everyone else is wrong kind of thing. And then when you do remote work, what does it really mean? Um, it means intentional in-person connections as well. Exactly. And, you know, we are so on the same page with that. And what I think is really interesting is there's there's a lot of scientific research to sort of back that up as well. I mean, Stanford have done a lot, MIT yeah. have done a lot, you know, um, and, and, and Jeremy Utley, who I think is, is awesome, always says, and I love this phrase, you know, the best outcomes come when we modulate being together and being apart. I think yeah. that's exactly it, right? It's like, yeah. what is that rhythm for you? What is that cycle of work? And I think, building it intentionally into the way that a team works can have yeah. can have real value because it takes some of that cognitive you know yeah. and, and i would say like I've, I've started more and more relating this to you know because sometimes when you relate it just to a corporate or work environment people get a bit um weary in a way because then it's like too corporate-ish but yeah. i've started also uh, reflecting as i've talked to a lot of individuals on and and to myself is like this is no different than how we live as humans yeah, right exactly. like in general like i i'm sure a lot of us um we have friends we have family we connect on whatsapp i message whatever your right communication medium is very very frequently but then you try your best it's not always feasible to meet them if they're in the bay area for example i meet a group of friends once a month and we connect in person my own family is all overseas like sally you're in london when i'm in london once a year or twice a year we we do connect live so this is this is who we are as humans we we need that um, level of, of balance um, to, 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 to build relationships and continue to make it sustainable. So this is no different. Um, we're, all, we're all humans working together, trying to be productive, no matter if it's a personal setting or if it's a work setting. And we, we should recognize that um, and try to work, work through that because that is what's sustainable in my, in my view as well. Absolutely. And so, you know, you talked a little bit about, you know, what works for the business and the business model and what works for the for the sort of the, the, the teams and always making sure that you have some element of in of in person there, yeah. however much else you do in a distributed or sort of remote way. How do you think about, you know, in your role as a you know chief people officer, like how, how would you think about crafting that if you know sitting in your seat being like, okay, what what does this look like? What are the kind of questions you think that people should be asking themselves? 
Yeah, so I think it's it's um I'll I'll take two flavors to this because it it varies based on where um and how long honestly the company has been around. So the first yeah. flavor is um I'll I'll give a flavor of Airbnb and the second flavor I'll give a paper my existing company. So Airbnb was not a remote company pre-pandemic. So to 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 go into a remote environment um and a lot of companies were like this it it's unfortunate to say this but we almost needed the pandemic in a, to to be an experiment in remote work for us by no means was the pandemic a good thing and we we ideally you know we never wanted it no one ever wanted it to happen but it it gave the flip side of forcing a remote work experiment airbnb was in a complete remote work experiment for 2 years when the pandemic started it wasn't just um initially so i i think um my my point there is more around um you have to if you're transitioning from non remote to remote then you really got to ask your ask yourself the question is the team ready is the leadership team ready because if the leadership team is not ready um you're not going to be able to cascade this through the organization so you have to really ask yourself can the business support it if we were if airbnb was in healthcare it would have been a different story can the business support it are the leadership team ready to do this and then take a stance but also don't take a stance where you are not open to learning what your what's worked well both for your employees and for your business and you kind of forget to continue to iterate um if that makes sense um and so that's one flavor the other flavor is um um paper for example was a, is was a remote first company right off the bat um they were born um um through a remote environment and there you have a flavor of okay it, the 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 company is distributed completely right airbnb went from being clustered to the bay area to slowly distributing this company is completely distributed and this is what attracted to me in addition to the the strong mission of supporting education and our next generation but um in in the in the context of an organization like paper that's kind of born remote and is already distributed it's almost like okay we have figured out um how to work in a remote environment and be productive but yeah. now we need to figure out what is that in person connection that we really need to be thoughtful of um and 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 infuse that from outside in almost because airbnb was going inside out in that analogy it's such, so, so, such an interesting point i love it, that it's it's great i mean it's it's really fascinating and again we don't whatever we try we'll have to see if it works right because you have to see what resonates with the employee base um how you're doing it So for us it's more about so so I guess coming back to your point it really depends on where an organization is those are just two flavors right you could be pivoting your business model and getting into a new market and that could that could also um impact um ability but I think it all bubbles down to um really having the honest conversation of what will work for your business is the leadership team aligned I think that's the that's the most critical piece um is the leadership team aligned um on on one philosophy that we want to go with and then does it work for your business model and what are the impacts on productivity and collaboration and they're two different the unculture i guess they 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 almost different things because you can be very productive remotely but then you i almost feel like it's a seesaw um if we had to like think through it of of connection and productivity yeah. and no matter where you are in this journey of of being remote or not um you are always juggling that balance right you could be super productive and then connection is kind of dropped a little bit because people are just so much into working like non stop and then you have to bring it back and sometimes you could go the other way you have a ton of events and things are all rosy in the good times you know a couple of years ago it was like spend yes. a lot and just have <laughs> amazing events and then you notice productivity dip so it's really a balance and i think uh, being in the role that i am in now as well as airbnb it it really started with um you know understanding what may work for us um what is the overall buy in um and like i said like even at airbnb as an example like remote work was not not how we operated pre pandemic and it took a whole year probably a little bit more i would say through the pandemic for our leadership team to all be like this can work because we we looked back and we were like we turned around the company and went public how yeah. can we tell ourselves now that remote work is not going to work and then you start unpacking um the layers below so it's you know like a lot of people programs but this one in particular um it, to emphasize um needs a bit of unpacking it's you know is the same when i joined paper it was not like we need to do xyz i took the first few months to really understand 
what is our business model? And when I say what our business model is, I mean, who are our customers? Who are, who are, where are our employees based? What do our employees want? What are they, what are they comfortable with? What are they asking for? Um, and once you kind of put all that together and kind of marry, thread it with where the leadership alignment is, then you come up with the right answer that works for you. Um, and that's, that's when you can start um, implementing it and continuously iterating on it. Um, and, you know, I, I, I remember this example at Airbnb where we launched our Live and Work Anywhere program and we realized very quickly, maybe, um, maybe six months into it, that our employees were really struggling and wanted more help on the personal tax front because they, they just didn't know it, it is a complex situation. And we, you know, as a corporation, you don't want to med meddle into personal taxes because you want to keep that um, separation of kind of conflict of interest. But we we ended up hearing them and we knew they wanted it. So we partnered with different firms for employees to get tax support if they wanted. So again, we didn't know that that was needed. And we could have just said, that's your problem. You know, at least we're, we're giving you a, a great program to work with, which it was, which it still is one of the fairly progressive programs. But you have to live and learn. And again, bringing it back to this is life, right? Like we have to live and learn in everything we do. We have to keep virtual and in-person connections in all our relationships yeah. um, that we do. This is no different. And if you do that, then I think humanity just continues in a sustainable way and you continue to iterate on what's best for that. Yeah. I, I mean, there's, there's so much in that to pick up on. I think the things that, that I certainly have really taken away from our conversations Q over the last sort of few months have been like, what is that balance between, you know, having the sort of policy of, okay, this is how our cycle of work is going to look like, but also having some of the frameworks and the support and the tools, as you talked about that personal tax box, to yeah. actually help people to take advantage of what of what you're exactly. putting in front of them. You know, and we see that a bit when we see team leaders who want to get their teams together. And like anyone who has ever tried to create an offsite knows <laughs> it's quite complex, right? There are lots of moving, lots of moving parts. And actually to try and give people a little bit of, you know, a few tools and a bit of guidance to help make some of that easier and yeah. then tools to be able to measure some of that impact so that we can iterate and learn and say okay did that increase a sense of belonging did yeah. that you know why was there a drop a drop in our perceived team performance after that what's going on there it just gives yeah. us a few more clues as to how we can iterate and, and sort of make it better so yeah. it's definitely something that we that we sort of see see a lot of um and there was something we wanted to talk about because um I am obviously biased around the science of, you know, getting teams out into into nature, out of their normal sort of working environments to sort yeah. of have these these connection bonding moments. And I think there's a lot to back that up. But, you know, you and I have had discussions about, OK, well, what if there's actually an existing infrastructure like office space or something mm -hmm. that we want to use? Like, it, how can we still be intentional and sort of create create impact using those? So I'd love you to just sort of share a little bit about how you're thinking about that. Yeah. So, again, I, I, I think it's very um, it's it's um, specific to an organization. And I'll, well, I'll give examples with what I mean by that. Um, I think. Um, there is um, so that there, there is the the true offsites, for lack of better words, uh, in the sense where you are unplugging, you're going to um, a separate location, so that you are um, you're you're resetting um, and refreshing your mindset um, based on um, where you are, and that's kind of what what you guys are pioneers at, right? Like helping the curation of the offsite is critically critically important, no matter where you are. But there's also the location piece, like. I, I work in this one room every day because I'm home and sometimes once once in maybe 10 days, I go and work in the backyard or on the on the dining table because I want to switch in, in mindset, right? Like it's a very different um, concept, but similar. So I think what we have to, uh, and so you have that, no matter where you are, you have to have a well curated offsite um, to make it productive. And I love what you guys have been doing recently, which is trying to measure the impact before and after. Because um, otherwise you're just hoping for the best and you just don't know. And, and if you don't know, and if you don't know, you're not even hearing the employees, you're not hearing that feedback, right? So that's, that's, that's a great thing that, that you guys have added on. So, so keeping the curation of the offsite, which is very, very critical, no matter where you go, that is, that is critical one element. The other element is where do you do it, right? And, you know, also I think some of the macroeconomic conditions today, <coughs> excuse me, 
which is fiscally um, very, very constrained um, for at least in the US and in tech, it's it's pretty um, relatively dire compared to a few years ago. Um, the, the other thing often comes up is the cost to do it in a different location. Right. And we're thinking through this as well. So it's, it's not it's a very fairly common, um, I would I would assume, in, um, occurrence. Now, what what happens there is you try to do it in locations or office spaces that you currently have. Um, and that is OK. Like you have to do some level of that blending. But what you run into sometimes is um, if you are a remote first company. So let's um, give papers an example. You have office locations in a distributed manner. We have one in the US, one in, in Canada, which is our headquarters. But those office spaces, unlike Airbnb's example, were never built to house the whole company. Yeah. Well, partly because the company went from a couple hundred people to a couple thousand people in eighteen months. So either you bought, you, you got a, you got a, you know, bulk load of real estate that was sitting empty most of the time. So my point here is, you have to find that balance of um, you need a high level of curation and and engage, and um, feedback loop and measurement. That no matter where you are, you need that, right? then you try to marry up, can you do it in your existing office locations? And you often bump up on, you cannot house everyone in your office location. You've either outgrown the, the distributed workforce due to great business growth, um, or the office was always a point of collaboration. So then, then you're kind of in the middle of trying to figure out, do you do it in a different location, which is, which is preferred, but if, if um, you know, if, um, Find, you know, your overall want to be a bit more constrained in this macroeconomic condition, which is a great thing to do for every single company um, in, 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 if they are in that situation. Then you try to balance out, do you break up, um, you know, do you not do an all company one? Right? Exactly. And there, there's value. There's a tremendous amount of value in that, too. So then do you do it by function. And when I say function, I mean it loosely because it could be one function with infusion from other functions because, fun, you know, teams do work cross collabor uh, collaboratively. So I think it ends up becoming, um, and I think to, you, to one of our earlier points, I think even if you do it in the office setting, that is not, um, in my view, um, an, a, a long-term sustainable thing. So it's definitely appropriate for the point in time. It's definitely appropriate to get small, less than the entire company together because you need that. You need that focus, right? If you want to focus on, you want a high level of curation, Having the whole company there, it's hard to have a high level of curation. You'll need breakouts anyways for groups to, to talk through. But I think over time, um, as kind of, you know, the entire macroeconomic condition in tech especially um, kind of opens up, hopefully, fingers crossed in the next year or so, I think, the, I think we'll go back to having um, thoughtful, smaller offsites, be it in the location that you have in an office or another one. Um, but then also having the annual or biannual company one because there is connection. Connection needs to be throughout. Yeah. So it really, it you know, I think yes, I think uh, a lot of organizations I've spoken to and including ours, we're trying to figure out how do we optimize our current space um, for the right level of offsites or in-person connection, for lack of better words. Um, but the curation is what's I think um, what I've learned over the last few years is the curation is often overlooked um, and it ends up sometimes being um, an offsite where some perceived it, like it was not productive, some felt it was really productive and you really don't have a measurement mechan mechanism to really go off either. So curating, and I love the concept of um, looking at it before and after to see how productive it was to, li to live and learn on that concept and, and make the next one um, different or better in, in whatever way it needs to be. So. Yeah, I think it's. Uh, I think the the disconnecting and going to a different location is is. I mean, we go all of us again as humans. We go on vacation to a different location versus our backyard because we want to reset and because we want to um, kind of recharge. Um, that's the concept. But again, you know, it could be like I I'm you know it could be a situation where I can't go on vacation for a year. But what do I do to make it best? I you know go to a different location in my town and, and get a get a little break an hour away if I drive. So I think location and cost, um, which are tied hand in hand for an organization that's been remote and does not have offices around the world like Airbnb to, to host um, is is something that's infused now. And I think the end result is you still need in-person connection. You, you cannot you cannot bypass that. Um, and 
um, you still need a high level of curation, no matter when you meet, um, to make it more productive. Yeah, what a beautiful summary. I think we see we see that a lot, you know, regardless of the size of the group. It's as you say, it's that intentionality. Like, why are we actually getting this group of people together? Yeah. Regard, you know, why? What are we hoping to get out of it, so that you can measure that and see how successful you've you've been? And that can be in a really light touch way. It doesn't have to be, you know, like dense or complicated. Yeah. But also that intention crafts your program. You know, yeah. if what you really want people to do is to get there and, you know, get to know each other and understand a bit more about how, you know, the systems of the business so they can innovate and, you know, all that good stuff. But you sit them down with a program where they're being spoken at for several hours. Yeah. What a waste of time. It's yeah. And and sometimes it could be like, you know, you do it at a location that's close to your customers because you want to understand your customers. Yeah, that's lovely. There's there's so many different ways um to to get that in-person connection going. Cause at the end of the day, um, I think for any business to be sustainable and drive growth, every single individual to the extent possible needs to be more connected to the business. If you're more connected to the business via your customers, you're more connected to the mission. And if you are more connected to the mission and you have a thread of connection, you can make anything. You, you can work through hurdles. You can work through tough times um, and you can really get. But again, all that cannot be done. It cannot be achieved remotely um, uh, in a sustainable way. You need that. It's almost like that thread needs to be sewn in person and then you can go out and live the fab fabric. Um, but you can't like expect the threads to be with self remotely. So um, that's yeah, that's definitely top of mind, I think. For us, for a lot of organizations um, that are rightfully under, under, I would say, when I, my comment on the fiscal discipline, I think it's, it's a good thing. I don't mean it in a negative context completely, because I think if we look back three years ago, there was almost no discipline on spending. Mm -hmm. Now, I think the tough times have brought that discipline and thoughtfulness around everything, around hiring like crazy when you have money or whether it's thinking through offsites. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I think that will hopefully drive sustainability collectively as well. Yeah, I agree. Amen to that. And we, we're content nerds here. So we always like to end with some sort of recommendation. Is there a book or a podcast or a particular episode of something that you're really enjoying right now that you would uh, you'd like to share with the audience? Um, for me, I think um, one of the podcasts that I actually haven't heard in the last two weeks, but I tried to do religiously, it's not specific to remote work, but it's more about the news, which is, um, it's called All In um, Podcast. Yeah. Um, and for me, it's just, it gives me a, a pulse on all the craziness that's going on in the markets, in the, in the tech space. Um, and for me, um, that really helps me like understand perspectives of various leaders um, or organizations and helps me reflect on what are they really trying to solve for um, because there's always um, behind something there's always a deeper thought whether we recognize it or not and I like geeking out about um, just being connected I think it all comes back to just like we need to be connected to our business I like to stay connected to what's going on in the world so there's there's a few podcasts um, I'm more a podcast um, listener than a reader um, but all in is one. Um, and then, um, Lars Smith has redefining HR that I really like as well. So the combination get, keeps me balanced on that. A great podcast. I love yeah. it. But you know, what about you? Any, any new ones that you've been, um, listening to? Cause I would love to uh, add to that list as well. Yeah. So there's one called, oh, what is it called? Hang on. I was just listening to it this morning. Let me pull it up. Cause it's really, it's really great. Um, not my first guess. Okay. I love this. And it's by um, an, an amazing woman who's in a um, who's connected to a community that Sophie and I are in called Female Founders Rise, which is which is brilliant. Okay. And okay. she is building um, a business with her co-founder um, called If We Raise, okay. which is basically about like, do, do we raise? How do we right. do it? One of the roots yeah. kind of thing. Absolutely brilliant. And, and she's got this podcast and she has like really interesting guests on often female guests who've had really interesting careers and, and sort of stories so I'm really enjoying that yeah. so sort of binging those episodes at the moment awesome I'll check it out yeah, yeah. lovely all right well look thank you so much Q yeah.
Um, this has been me. amazing as ever. We really appreciate you taking the time, especially at an eye-wateringly early time yeah, for you, I given that you were over in California. Um, and I hope that the audience have enjoyed it. This will be recorded, so you'll be able to watch it back if you want to. Oh. And yeah, connect with me and Q on, on LinkedIn. Yep. We would love that. Yeah, please reach out. Thanks for having me, and thanks for everything you do um, and for WorkTrip. I think it's definitely uh, something that's needed across the board and excited to continue to be part of that journey as well. Thank you, Q. All right. All right. Take care.